Hey everyone! Let's create a simple shader that will shake our screen or an element on the screen as if an earthquake has occurred. This could be quite useful in various platformers, right? And in fact, it's very easy to implement. Let's get coding! This time, I'll once again use a screenshot from our game Whispers of Prague. While it's not exactly a platformer, the principle is the same regardless of the image we use. So I'll create a new 2D scene with all the usual elements, like this. Right click, create new scene, 2D scene and shake, okay. Very well, and now let's take the the texture and drag it to the scene. The um, Sprite 2D uh, node was automatically created and we can fix it in the inspector. Cancel centered for the offset and in transform position reset to 0, 0. Okay, and now of course we need to add a new shader material to the material. So new shader material, click new shader which is shake GD shader of the canvas item type and I'll put it as usual to the shaders folder and create and click again to open it in the editor. I will just expand that a little bit. All right, and as usual, we will delete everything that isn't needed like the function vert uh, vertex and light. All right, let's start with a bit of theory. If we need a periodic effect that smoothly rises at the beginning of each period, reaches an extreme and then smoothly falls again, the sine function slightly adjusted to meet specific requirements proves to be the most effective. We can illustrate this clearly on a graph. So I open the site desmos.com which is a great tool for this purpose and let me just display sine x. Cool. As we can see, such a graph is quite suitable for our purposes. However, we would like to adjust the amplitude and the frequency of this period and shift the graph along the y-axis so that we can control the duration of the earthquake, variation of the period and the maximum or minimum values. This is very easy to achieve. We change the frequency by multiplying the argument of the sine function. So for instance, if I do x times two, it is twice as uh, frequent or multiplied by 0.5, it is twice slower. All right, to shift the graph, we add a constant to the result like plus one, and we can see it was shifted to the top and now it's all, uh, all values are positive numbers and we change the amplitude by multiplying the result by another constant. So I put it to brackets and multiply the result by two. Okay, in our case, the value of X on the horizontal axis will change over time and the corresponding Y value on the vertical axis will determine the screen shift in the vertical direction. However, for a simple sine wave, the shift would be too smooth. So we'll introduce a pseudo-random factor to add some fluctuations to its shift and give it a nice shake. So instead of this uh, curve, it would be something like t -t 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 this, these fluctuations. We'll implement this in the code where we will first add the necessary uniform parameters. So I'll switch back to Godot and let's do it. Uh, uniform float amp for amplitude with a hint range and the initial value, let's put it to two and it would be from, I don't know, zero to 20 with this kind of step. Now we need the horizontal shift float shift again uh, in range and let's set the initial value to one and from zero to one with 0 0.01 and finally the frequency uniform float frac so in range and let's set the initial value to one 
and make it from uh, point 0.1 to, I don't know, 2 and step point 0.01. Okay, so and we can go ahead and write the fragment function. In it, we'll introduce a variable called offset, whose value will be calculated using the formula from our graph and the parameters we just added. So let's code. Uh, so let's start as usual. Vec2 UV is UV. And now the offset I mentioned float offset would be and we will apply the graph, uh, the formula from our graph. So let's get back. Where is it here? Uh, sign. And I said the argument would be time times frequency plus shift eh, and multiplied by the amplitude and i think the amplitude would be too high so let's divide it by 100 multiply by 0 0.01 okay and now we can assign the result to the change of the uv uh, of the y coordinate of uv coordinate so it would be plus equals offset increased by the offset and finally color is the texture of our texture at the modified uv coordinates okay uh, let me just show more of the image now we can see exactly what i was talking about just a while ago this looks more like a swing than an earthquake so it's time to incorporate a pseudo random factor for this, we'll use a very simple function that I'll call hash11 because it takes a one-dimensional float parameter and returns a one-dimensional value like this. Float hash11 of the parameter, let's call it n, and it's very simple, return the fractional part of sine of the n argument multiplied by some big number 4 3 7 5 8 point five four five three one two three okay i think this is one of these well-known formulas which are usually used to generate a pseudo noise so the following adjustment remains to be made for the argument of the hash one one function we will use the current time. Since the fract function, this one, returns a value from the interval from 0 to 1, we will subtract 0.5 from the result to get a number in the interval uh, negative 0.5 to 0.5, uh, which allows us for shaking in both upward and downward directions. Okay, so let's define another variable, call it quake. And that would be offset multiplied by the result of the hash function applied on time and as I said we subtract 0.5 okay and of course we need to use it so instead of offset we will use quake wait great we are done we can adjust the frequency and observe observe how the period speeds up or slows down or we can change the amplitude to control the fluctuations so i'll do it here frequency now it's faster the periods are twice as fast or amplitude now it's pretty big it's almost unusable in a game and yeah okay i have one more improvement in mind if we wanted short pauses between individual waves, it would be useful for the graph to stay at zero for a moment. But how can we achieve this without branching the code? Let's take another look at the graph. Here it is. So we'll change the offset to 0.5. Uh, 0.5. And we'll see that the part of the graph falls below the the x-axis however this isn't enough as it will only reach zero at these intersections we need to add a max function that will convert all negative numbers to zero 
like this and max of this and zero excellent that's exactly what we need now i'll do the same in our code so switch back to godot and now where is it here we will use max and add zero here okay and now if i change the offset the shift to 0.5 we should observe pauses between the waves okay now it's shaking now it's not and shakes again great i think we can be satisfied with the result thank you for watching our shader has all the features that make it easy to work with because it is simple configurable and can be easily controlled from a script so if a situation arises in our game that should trigger a screen shake it will be enough to set the amp parameter to a value greater than zero which will activate the entire effect so you can also send custom values to the sign function if you don't want to rely on internal time allowing for even greater control there are plenty of possibilities in any case, I wish you good luck with your games, have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.